Okay. Uh, so we, what we do is uh, that we work on the detection so that we uh, detect uh, all this junk and uh, protect uh, the people and we also uh, research, uh, do analysis of some of the more interesting stuff. And whenever something uh, really interesting comes up, every once in a while I present it at a conference like this. Uh, so as uh, you probably have guessed by now, we'll be looking at uh, the Induc virus. And whenever a real virus uh, pops up, it's always always uh, quite interesting for us. Uh, uh, that's a real file-infecting parasitic virus, not, not a Trojan. It also adds uh, more work uh, for us because we have to clean it. Uh, we have to restore the uh, the infected files to their original state, we can't just delete it like a Trojan. But it's always always fun, it's, uh, it reminds us of the old days of the old file infectors. And not only is, is this topic interesting because it's a virus, it's an, a parasitic virus, but Induc itself is also a very interesting virus. It's not the traditional kind like a file appender or prepender uh, where we uh, search the hard drive uh, looking for executables to infect. Uh, but it's, uh, I've heard it called some, somewhere a compile a virus. So what it would do is that it would target uh, de developers' computers, people who are using Delphi, and it would infect a standard Delphi library in the uh, programming environment. And as a result, uh, every, every project, every executable compiled by this environment would get up infected. This has uh, led uh, over the past three years in uh, to quite massive spreading because also legitimate companies who uh, got infected by this and were shipping uh, their programs, their applications infected. So uh, the widespread, so this, this, this thing was uh, quite widespread. So we'll be, uh, we'll be taking a look at uh, more, more of a sort of a high level look at the evolution, uh, what the virus was uh, doing in the early, uh, early variants until the from the early variants up to the most recent ones. Uh, and also a little more in-depth look uh, at the code. Uh, so for all of the re reverse engineers, uh, or for all, all of the people who aren't uh, working with malware analysis, don't worry, this is not gonna be uh, any uh, hardcore stuff. We're not gonna be looking at kernel mode rootkits and stuff like that. Uh, for all the reverse engineers here, I'm sorry, but it's not gonna be any hardcore stuff. So it's gonna be like, a little uh, analysis of a, a lightweight analysis of an interesting uh, virus. Okay, so let's uh, take a look at the first variant. As I mentioned, it's about three years old. Uh, at this stage, it was more of a more of a proof of concept code, like an alpha stage. Uh, somebody was apparently experimenting. Uh, it is also not the first uh, compile a virus like proof of concepts uh, of uh, of this uh, kind. Uh, they were also introduced back in the 80s for uh, the C++ uh, compiler, I think. So, uh, but this is the, this is this is the first, uh, I think, massive, uh, uh, massively spreading uh, example that we, uh, at least, we have seen. Uh, so let let's take a look at how how it uh, proceeded uh, with the infection. So it targeted a system library uh, called sysconst.pass. Uh, uh, some a uh, constant uh, used by Delphi linked uh, with every every compiled project. It was targeting, targeting Delphi versions uh, 4 to 7, and that's all, all it was doing. So it was spreading, it was uh, infecting uh, Delphi, Delphi programming environments, but apart from that uh, spreading mechanism, it had no real malicious payload. So let's take a look at the code, what it actually looks like. I hope the fonts are big enough for you to see. Okay, so there's that. That's the compiled one. That's the source code. Up here is the legit stuff, all the, all the constants uh, used by Delphi and down here is the stuff that's not legit. Uh, by adding a few few new lines, we could bring it to more readable form. Uh, all this code does, as I said, it's infect, it infects uh, the environment. So when this, w this was run, all it was do is it would look up uh, this file and add this, uh, this code 
uh, to where it's at right now. And this is where you can see where it's doing. So we'd look for the Delphi, uh, Delphi installation directory by querying uh, the registry. It was starting versions four to seven. Uh, it only looked in, in this directory. Then over here, uh, after having, having infected it, that's procedure RE, see down here. So it would, it would add all of that code in there. And in the end, it would uh, run that create process with these parameters. So it would, it would compile uh, the pass file and uh, the, the resulting DCU uh, would be linked to every, every uh, project coming out of this infected, li uh, infected uh, IDE. Okay, back to the slides. Okay, uh, then about uh, two years later, uh, the second uh, variant popped up. Uh, the code has been completely rewritten. It featured uh, some, some improvements, but it still had no malicious payload. So some of those uh, improvements featured uh, a better, better way of uh, searching for the Delphi installation directory. Now, as uh, you all probably aware of, uh, Delphi uh, has undergone some name changes uh, for, from Borland to uh, Code Gear. It was Borland Development Studio. Uh, I think it's Embarcadero now. Uh, so, so this this uh, targeted uh, these these name changes as well. Uh, it also made the code analysis a little bit uh, more difficult by adding some encryption using some really primitive anti-debugging tricks. And uh, there were also some functions, which I'll show you uh, just now, but that, that are unused. So obviously somebody uh, was experimenting with this stuff. Okay, so here again, syscons.pass legitimate stuff at the bottom over here is some thing that's not supposed to be there uh, encrypted this time. And if we decrypt it, this is this is what we're ending up seeing. So from the strings, you can see that it's uh, it's looking looking uh, for the installation directory at different places. Uh, it's targeting targeting different versions as well. Uh, the end result, what it, what it would do is is the same as before. But we, we also see some, some interesting strings like hal dll, url, mon dll, uh, stuff like that, which is unused. So that's ntdetect.com. And where's the anti-debugging stuff? Yeah, over here. So here are some really, uh, really trivial uh, anti-debugging -debug tricks that it was using. That's pretty much pretty much it. So a little more a little more time time consuming to analyze. Uh, still the same payload, uh, i.e. no payload. Uh, it would just infect and spread. Uh, this this version uh, wasn't as successful in spreading as the first one, uh, but that it didn't really matter because uh, a new new version came later. Okay, and that's uh, index C. So that uh, first popped up uh, in August 2011. Again, the code was uh, completely written, rewritten, and this was a this was a more uh, major uh, major release. Uh, there were much uh, much bigger differences this time. Uh, the the target uh, target library that it was uh, infecting changed. So it was uh, sysinit.pass now instead of sysconst.pass. Uh, uh, it also added a classic exe uh, file infection vector, so it would uh, look uh, for executables uh, by traversing the file, stru uh, file structure of hard drive, what a regular virus, virus would do. And now it all actually uh, also did uh, something evil. So let's take a look at this uh, latest reincarnation of the virus. Uh, 
that's the sysinit uh, dot pass uh, with just two lines of code uh, inserted into the file. Uh, as you can guess, the function create my file uh, from this array is defined in this uh, defines dot ink include. So let's take a look at that over here. Resolution change, sorry for that. Good. Okay, so uh, the sysinit pass file looks like this. Let's see if I can find uh, the malicious stuff really quickly over here. So uh, there's the, this line of code was uh, inserted by the virus and this line of code was inserted by the virus. And as you can probably guess from just looking at that, here uh, this array uh, contains uh, the body of the virus. It's 52,736 uh, bytes long. And down here, uh, we can see the part where, where it uh, drops that onto the hard drive and executes it. So now, now it's a uh, now it's a uh, regular regular compiled uh, PE executable. So uh, we'll be loading it, loading that up into IDA. So there's some there's some installation stuff uh, to remain persistent on the in infected uh, machine. Uh, that's not really important. Uh, I mentioned that uh, it also has a secondary infection vector, so that it lo uh, looks uh, for executables that it would uh, want to infect, and that's carried out in this function over here drives to infect and uh, this is the part where it where it actually actually in infects uh, the Delphi environment so what I ju what I just showed you over there uh, here get logical drive strings uh, enumerates the drives um, it filters for some f some uh, drive types that it's not interested in for example CD ROMs and stuff like that um, okay, this second part is used for the Delphi infection. So it would also check uh, whether the system volume information uh, directory is present on that drive. So this is an interesting method of uh, checking whether it's a, it's a hard drive, not a, not a removable, removable media, for example. And if we go in here, you can see the typical Typical stuff: uh, find first file, find next file, traversal of uh, of the directory structure, and over here. Now the left uh, the left path is taken for the Delphi infection, and the right path is uh, taken for the executable uh, infection. So what it does is that it first checks whether it's in the correct directory. It looks whether this this is uh, present uh, in the path, whether this and also this, and if it matches all these criteria, it decides that, okay, I found the correct directory. Uh, let's run those uh, two lines of code into uh, that library, sysinit.pass, these two lines of code, and where is it? Over here, it would, um, it would compile that. So it's really pretty pretty simple uh, simple technique mm. okay so 
I mentioned the secondary uh, infection vector. So basically, uh, it's a it's a prepender type of virus, or more more specifically, uh, it would uh, append uh, the executable that is trying to infect in an encrypted form after after itself. Uh, it would delimit that with uh, string supernatural. Uh, that would also be a marker that the file was infected. And this is an example of uh, one such infected executable. Down here is uh, the encrypted original file. Uh, the encryption method, uh, something really trivial, some uh, XOR, XOR and add, nothing, nothing too fancy. Uh, Okay, let's look at the code one more time. Okay, so that's that. that. That checks whether the supernatural string is uh, present, the strings are encrypted. Um, okay, nothing too interesting. In this part, of course, uh, over here at one point it checks whether uh, whether it contains uh, an infected uh, executable uh, after that after that string, and it, it would uh, execute that, drop it onto the hard drive, and execute that. So, like a normal virus, there's no, but there's no uh, entry point redirection and, and all this stuff going on. So it's a really simple technique. Uh, so th this this parser dr ser search drives to infect uh, that was uh, infecting the Delphi in this case and in this case it was uh, in this thread it was uh, searching for the executables but one interesting thing to mention here is wait, that this time it doesn't want uh, system volume information to be present. So the secondary uh, infection vector is used uh, to, facilitate it, to facilitate it to spread even better. It's uh, used for spreading via removal of media. So it doesn't uh, infect all executables on the hard drives, but USB sticks, uh, shared, shared network drives, and stuff like that. Um, and as I mentioned, it also has malicious payload like uh, most, uh, like over 90% of malware out there has some uh, botnet capability, the, the ability to download uh, other malicious uh, junk onto the infected machine. So once they have accomplished uh, to infect the machine, they want to uh, leverage and uh, make most, most out of that. So uh, providing this, uh, this service and basically downloading uh, other malware and doing other malicious uh, deeds over there. And here's a really trivial, trivial self-defense mechanism. Uh, you'll see in in a, in a later slide why why I'm showing you this. It's it's really really trivial. What it does is that it looks whether Task Manager uh, is running, uh, and when it finds it, so that's regular regular APIs create tool have 32 snapshot process 32 first next etc cetera, etc. Cetera. And when it finds it, it simply uh, exits. So the virus would terminate. Uh, but more on that later. Uh, and the actual payload, as I said, it's a downloader that would, okay, contains uh, three URLs that it's trying to download from. Um, we won't be able to see them here because Yeah, because again, uh, they're encrypted using this this uh, XOR and add. As you can see, it's an uh, HTTP address. Uh, but the first file that it would download is not the file uh, that it would uh, also execute. But it does does it in a in a quite interesting interesting way. Um,
Okay. And the way it does it is uh, that it downloads uh, user avatars from uh, uh, from certain uh, discussion forums and hides hides uh, more links uh, in these. So a little uh, steganography uh, used there. Again, this is not uh, this is not the first uh, malware to use this technique, but it's I think interesting nonetheless. So uh, one example of such downloaded file is is this. Okay, it's gonna unsupported video mode. Wonderful. So let's look at it like this. So here in the exif uh, exif information, this part over here is another encrypted URL. And that's the one where it would actually download uh, an executable from and execute it. Uh, so this is, a, this is an in interesting technique to, uh, to control uh, the individual bots. Uh, it provides a mechanism to update itself but just by uh, uploading a different avatar with a different link. Uh, the virus would uh, download something different. And yeah, so it's an avatar looking like this. There's another one. Another one. There's three that. Those are the three download links uh, found over there. Um, yeah, there's there's another URL. Uh, so what was it doing? What was it downloading? It was downloading a um, piece of malware that we detect as as that pswdelf.nqs. Uh, as the name suggests, it's a password stealer. So uh, it's probably some kind of uh, some kind of spying was going on, some kind of uh, uh, data theft. Uh, this this also also was uh, harvesting uh, FTP passwords and other interesting interesting stuff. And so once once we once we found okay, this is this is an interesting piece of malware. Uh, it actually has a malicious payload now. Uh, let's. Uh, Let's uh, take a look at how successful uh, the authors of this malware uh, were, what they were after, what, the, what their potential targets uh, could have been, and uh, what, was the, what was the scale of these attacks. So when we looked at our telemetry uh, from the detection, we found something really, really interesting. Uh, most targets in Slovakia, lots of, uh, lots of targets in Russia, uh, these two together form like almost 80% of uh, all the d all the worldwide detection. Now this Induc C variant it wasn't spreading as massively as uh, Induc A. So while while Induc A we were detecting uh, over the time uh, like tens thousands to ten tens of thousands of uh, detections uh, per day when it was uh, most active. Uh, this Induc C variant it only infected a couple hundred. Uh, computers uh, throughout its uh, lifetime altogether. And when we looked at, when we looked at the targets, uh, it was no co coincidence uh, that uh, these countries were, uh, were so high in the statistics. Uh, because in Slovakia, one big uh, manufacturing company uh, was targeted by this uh, uh, data stealing virus, uh, which I won't name for obvious reasons. And in Russia, it was uh, two big targets, uh, lots of lots of other smaller ones, but two uh, two big and really infected ones. Uh, it was one uh, one really big Russian bank, and it was also uh, uh, an office of a Russian state institution somewhere in Yekaterinburg. So quite interesting. So we have this we have this curious curious virus. Uh, which has an unconventional spreading mechanism uh, used for data theft. So that's pretty much it uh, for the virus family. Uh, so far up to date, we have not seen a virus, uh, an Induc D, but it's not, it's not the end of the story quite yet. Uh, so who has heard of uh, Dorifel or Quervar here in the audience? Yeah, one. So you might have uh, seen reports like this in the news. Uh, 
So this was this was quite big in in the Netherlands, and uh, lots of this uh, lots of this uh, uh, lots of lots of information has been uh, released on this uh, publicized. Um, it was also also malware uh, used for data theft. It had uh, different uh, different payloads. It was quite interesting. But what struck me as I as I uh, analyzed uh, Index C uh, last year, so when this came to light, is the amount of similarities to the to the code of Index C. So this Dorifel, uh, it was uh, most uh, most uh, active in or. Uh, it saw the light of day sometime in May uh, this year. It was most prevalent in the Netherlands. Uh, it's not another another incarnation of uh, Delphi. It doesn't have that unique mechanism of uh, it's not, it's not Induc. It's uh, it doesn't infect Delphi uh, like Induc does. Uh, instead, it infects uh, executables like Induc C. It's in actually in the very same uh, very same way. And it also infects uh, documents, uh, Word documents, Excel documents. Uh, it turns those into uh, into executables. Uh, it uses a really interesting interesting uh, technique for uh, masquerading uh, these infected files uh, by using this uh, right to left override trick. So when the file name uh, of the infected file would be, for example, infected. Uh, SLX uh, SCR, so it would be an executable uh, screensaver. But uh, this Unicode character over there is the right to left override, which would uh, uh, have uh, have the effect of flipping that to right to left. So uh, on a default uh, Windows 7 setup, uh, this is what uh, the victim would see. Uh, now this doesn't uh, work uh, by default on, on Windows uh, XP. Because uh, this uh, these right to left, uh, right to left uh, fonts, uh, characters, whatever, uh, they're not installed by default. But if they were, it would uh, it would work as well. Uh, it's not uh, it's not the first malware to use this trick, but it's it's an interesting technique. And let's take a look at the similarities between Induc and Quervar that I was mentioning. So does this look familiar at all? Uh, delimiter string, a different one this time, but uh, the same the same way of uh, infecting executables. Uh, it would add uh, the encrypted executable after the body of uh, the virus. Uh, the virus is written in Delphi again, like Induc C. Uh, the encryption this time is different. I have a I have a table later on showing the the comparison. It's not just uh, XOR and add, but this is I think used RC4. Uh, does this ring a bell? Just like Induc uh, C was using the avatars on the forums, uh, exactly the same way uh, Quervar uh, was doing that. So hiding, hiding uh, other stuff, other uh, stuff to download the links for them uh, inside these avatars, and that seemingly meaningless uh, and trivial self-defense mechanism is again used in Quervar. Uh, I don't know if you can see it from over there because the fonts are quite small, but it's apart from the sleep uh, value, it's exactly the same code. So uh, here, here, here's a brief comparison of the stuff. As I said, uh, both written in Delphi, uh, they are both uh, virus, so they're not Trojans. Uh, they infect uh, stuff a little bit differently. Uh, Quiver also has uh, document infection. Uh, Induc, on the other hand, has the infection of the Delphi environment. Uh, but then we see a lot of the code is uh, shared and it's uh, very, very similar. Also, the uh, traversal of, uh, the, of the file structure uh, the recurs recursive uh, enumer enumeration of the disks, uh, the code over there is exactly the same. So yeah, uh, that's uh, that's basically it. Uh, we have seen a very uh, untypical uh, type of virus, which uh, throughout uh, seeing its uh, evolution 
uh, was first uh, just sort of an experiment, uh, didn't, do, didn't do anything much. Uh, in the latest version, it was uh, possibly used in, uh, in targeted attacks. And then another, uh, another malware family which shares a lot of, com a lot of code uh, with Induk. Uh, probably, as I said, probably not uh, the same guys behind it, but uh, definitely lots of uh, inspiration uh, from this family. So if there are any questions, fire away. Okay, thank you.